Hello yogis, welcome back to the yoga house. In this short mini video, we're going to do variations of Sarvangasana or shoulder stand. We're going to begin with our regular Sarvangasana, then we'll go into Halasana or plow pose. And then we're going to go into Nirlamba Sarvangasana, which means an unsupported shoulder stand. You have, of course, as this is now your video, the option to just do one, two, or all three of these, to pause, to modify where you need to, and to repeat, of course, again and again to help you with this practice. Ladies, if you are on a bleed or menstruating, I wouldn't advise staying upside down for long periods of time as your body is trying to release in the apana, the other way, the downward action. However, you can still practice the preparatory positions and getting into it just for a small few seconds and then coming back out again before you hold everybody else or yourself when you're not on a bleed. Holding these postures for long periods of time is said to have amazing benefits for your immune system and for balancing the endocrine system or hormones. This is a practice that comes into all forms of physical yoga and so you'll usually find these postures in the syllabus of everything. Iyengar yoga, Ashtanga yoga, Satinanda yoga, whatever kinds of yoga you're doing. It's one of the oldest kind of variations on the inversion sequences. So you'll find shoulder stand or pictures of shoulder stand forever in the history and the culture of yoga. So let's begin by lying into a supine position. I'm going to not look at you while I'm in these positions uh, for the simple fact that it is safer for your neck and the health of your neck to keep your head centre while you're in these positions. So I'm going to talk you through as I do them. To begin with Sarvangasana, a shoulder stand, we're going to engage the lower belly and the pelvic floor. This action of engaging here is called banda or locking in of the energy. But what this also does, as well as locking the energy into the body, is it supports and strengthens us as we kick the legs over. I would advise that you don't use momentum. I'm much more a fan of control. However, if you need to use a little bit of momentum, as I said, please make sure that your head is steady. And so we're lifting the legs up, lifting the pelvis up, and then taking our hands to the lower back. For the moment, just be on your tippy toes, and we're going to lean over to the right side to hug the elbow in on the left. Lean over onto the left, hug the elbow in on the right, and start to do that on a micro level until your hands are a little bit closer to your shoulder blades. And then we're going to lift up, Maybe walk the hands closer to the shoulders. And I like to click, click. I like to plantar flex my feet in this position and breathe deeply there. And so keep hugging the elbows in. Tuck the chin into your chest. Work the hands a little further up towards your shoulders. And try to get a straight line through the front from where your hips meet your legs. Breathing there, squeeze the legs together. As time and gravity take over, story of my life, <laughs> you'll need to adjust and readjust. Walk the hands a little further up to keep that lovely straight line. I would recommend at least 10 breaths here. 30 if you can, more if you want to. Our next one, coming into Halasana, plow pose. Take the legs down, interlace your fingers, point your toes if you can, and wriggle your shoulder blades in. Again, keeping your head center, very important. And use the feet on the floor to lift the pelvis a little higher. If pointing the toes gives you cramp, tuck your toes under. If getting the toes to the floor is not possible, keep your legs lifted, but work on straightening them. I would recommend at least eight breaths here. 
Do 15 if you can, more if you want to. Legs are straight, pressing together. Be aware of your whole body. And then from there, just going to tuck my t-shirt in. From there, we're going to take our hands to our back again. Lift up into Sarvangasana. Wriggle the elbows in. And this time we're going to go to near Lamba Sarvangasana. Unsupported shoulder stand. So there might be a bit of flexion in the hips. And you take one arm up, then the other. I recommend five breaths at least here. To come down, control. If you can, keep your arms up for extra challenge. Take the legs over. And roll down, keep your head on the floor. With control, roll down. And then it might suit you just to come into, say, a Shavasana. After this, if you're finished your practice, or you can work into maybe the Chakrasana, the wheel pose that we were doing in a prior video to this one. Or if you want to, if you feel that being upside down in that way, particularly if you're prone to sciatica and or if you haven't been practicing yoga a long time, then often the lower back, I've heard students say to me that the lower back feels achy after the Sarvangasana, the shoulder standing series. And so what you would do there is a little Paravritasana, Sutta Paravritasana, a little supine twist. You just let your legs go over. Once you're out of it, of course, you can put your head from side to side. I didn't mean keep it center forever. It's hard for driving. Letting the legs go over to one side and just breathe with it. You'll feel the relevant stretches in any areas that might be a bit held or tight. And when ready, then you're coming up to center. My arms are just relaxed, I'm passive here. And the legs come over to the other side. Keep both shoulder blades grounded. And you're breathing there. And that can be a really nice counter pose. Or alternatively, you can take the feet as wide as your mat, lean your knees in on each other, let the arms passively go back. And it's a lovely release for the back. And so that is your Sarvangasana shoulder stand practice. I hope you find that useful and it will help you in your yoga journey. Thank you everyone. Namaste to you.